Welcome to the Settlers Online PvP video tutorial. PvP is new, complex game content, which enables players to engage in battle against other players. This requires some preparation. Let's start at the beginning. You must first reach level 30 to be able to play PvP. This video is merely additional help. You will find the tutorial quests in the game once you have reached level 30. These are also highly recommended to enable you to grasp the basic principles of PvP. A brand new combat mode with additional new troops has been added to make everything a little more interactive. Before you can train these new troops, you need new weapons that can be manufactured by the new weaponsmith. Once you have produced enough weapons, the troops can be trained in their brand new barracks. Finally, we need someone to lead our new troops. A new specialist called Marshall has set himself this task. You can find him in the tavern for a handful of coins. As an ordinary Marshal cannot lead many troops, we recommend that you acquire an expedition supplier from the merchant. Although he cannot fight, he can transport the troops to the island to be attacked. Once you have made all the preparations, the question still remains. Where do you actually find an expedition? You find expeditions in the same way as, for example, adventures or treasure. This is where the explorer comes in. However, there are some differences compared to his normal procedures. For example, the explorer no longer requires search time, but will need to recover for a certain period after his search. He also brings a certain number of expeditions with him, so you then have to decide which ones must be attempted first. Please note that the expedition will start immediately after the search. Once you have decided on the size of the expedition, a new window will appear displaying a selection of different missions. The red and blue fields show if it is a player or a bandit map. You can now choose a specific map with extra resources. Once you have chosen an expedition, it's not just a question of an extra reward. There is lots of information which you need to observe. The difficulty levels range from 1, very easy, up to 3, very hard. A troop's limit shows how many troops are allowed on an island. The marshal limit indicates how many marshals you can have on the island. This number does not include the expedition supplier. There is of course a set time limit in which you must liberate the island. The additional reward is also shown, but you only receive this after the island has been cleared and you have conquered it. You can only take a certain number of medipacks with you on expeditions, which you can also use to revive your marshals with no waiting time. And now let's see what this kind of expedition looks like. Here you can see a regular sized map. Similar to the adventures, there is a start sector. You can fight your way through the entire map from here. You will have to attack some bandits, while you can leave others alone. Ultimately, you have to defeat the map boss and claim the expedition for yourself. The bandits have never been too happy about a general, or, in this case, a marshal travelling through their territory. They will attack him, but you can prevent the assault by monitoring the red zone around the bandit camp. With bandit camps, you must also watch out for the type of bandits that are lurking in it. Their fighting style is different from that of normal troops, but that should not be a problem if you select the right troops. However, if you encounter a bandit leader, you should think carefully which troops would best suit the attack. Once you have defeated a map boss, the island is captured and the relevant quest is completed. Here is a good example of how easy it was to omit some camps to therefore reduce your troop losses. You were previously shown some images of the new battle, but now we want to look more in detail. Once an enemy camp has been attacked, a new combat slot appears. Here, you can see numerous new details such as how the battle is progressing or which unit will fight next. The new battle thrives on fresh units. Let's take a closer look at them. The new units are divided into ranged, cavalry and melee units. 
Each troop type has its own advantages and disadvantages. Some have a certain bonus against others and therefore inflict more damage. Melee fighters are excellent in battle against cavalry, whereas the cavalry are superb against ranged troops. Melee fighters cannot get anywhere near ranged fighters, which gives the latter a substantial advantage. It is extremely important to bear these little rules in mind. A tooltip will be displayed when you move your mouse over a unit as a constant reminder of against which troop type you have a bonus. The combat slot itself shows if the battle is progressing well or badly. The small green plus sign under the unit shows that things are going well for us. No plus means that the units are fairly well balanced and no unit has a bonus. If a red plus appears next to the enemy, then they have the advantage. It is not only important that you know which units are well matched to fight each other, so this unit should also take part in the battle. You can also switch them during combat. The next troops are already waiting behind the troops currently engaged in combat. Click on them to see all the units the marshal is leading. If you now click on one of the other units, it will jump forward one position and be sent into battle into the next round. The next round starts when a stack of troops is empty, either your troops or those of the enemy. It is essential that you prepare your troops before you switch them. The additional game content also includes the blocking feature. You can use the heavy units to block certain camps to enable you to launch a direct attack on the bandit leader. Here we can see a typical situation where it would be a good idea to block two camps. Once a bandit leader or a map boss has been defeated, all the other bandits will flee the sector, regardless of whether they're still fighting. This tactic will save many lives among your troops, but it also entails some risks. It is slightly more complicated to be aware of the timing of all the battles and to control several marshals. Once the entire map has been captured and you have confirmed your victory with the quest, a new window will appear to display the results of the expedition. You will immediately return to your own island by clicking Return Home. The rewards from your arduous battles will be waiting for you when you arrive on the island. You will find them in your mail. You will notice that the small window is still active from the expedition. Click the new colony button to access the colony menu. Here you can make the expedition to your own colony. Build defenses and also pick up the resources you have earned. Before you can start exploiting your resources, you must first turn the captured island into your colony. However, it is advisable to build up your defenses beforehand because this will not be possible subsequently. When you click Build Defences, you will be immediately directed to the island you have acquired. Don't be alarmed, the bandits are back, but this time they are fighting on our side. Furthermore, it is possible to build defensive structures at predefined locations. There is a wide selection of defences available. However, our projects will be restricted by a cost indicator with defence points, so you won't always be able to construct the best buildings. There are basically four different types of defence buildings available. This depends on which units are to be assigned to the camp. One is for the range fighters, one for the melee fighters, one for the cavalry, and another that is able to accommodate all the units, although the last is also the most expensive. The larger the building, the more units can fit inside, but it will then consume more defence points. Once you have chosen a building type and a location, make sure you fill it with units. This follows the same principle as with the marshal. Different units can enter the building depending on the building type. The units follow the same principle as your own, except that they do not have to be produced. When your defences are ready to be positioned, it only remains for you to make the island your colony. Use the new colony button to access the menu and then click Claim Colony. The timer now also starts counting down so you can start exploiting the additional resources. The colony cannot be attacked by other players for the first 12 hours. Other players can then attack you and they will receive more rewards than a bandit map. You can own up to four colonies simultaneously if you have reached the correct level. You can buy two additional slots for gemstones or valor points. Don't forget that you can pick up your additional resources every few hours in the colony menu by clicking gather resources. That's all for now. As you know precisely how everything works, 
we suggest that you embark on your journey and steal a few islands from some other players. Good luck! <laughs>